Hey, how's it going guys? Ancient Rune here back with another Borderlands 3 build video and today I will be going over my ultimate Amara build. Many builds are focused on one powerful thing, but this build throws all those powerful things together to have one main goal of dealing the most damage and clearing content fast. This build is so chaotic and has so many things going on, so make sure to pay attention, but this is just so dumb and strong when done right. Some of these do have the outside of eating a second enemy near a boss do high damage but there's also other things here that just don't need a second target but amara has some crazy stuff here and her action skills are so fun if you're looking for a gun build this definitely is not it but if you want to deal insane damage and clear fast as well as some fun then this build is for you don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. The save file will be found in my Discord, which is linked down below, and I hope you guys enjoy. All right, first we'll go over the main thing. This is going to be just dealing a bunch of damage and crazy for mobbing, and can also be used with bossing. The main thing you're gonna be using for mobbing is the Pestilence. The Pestilence is used for the reload, which deals action skill damage and gets the action skill scaling times 31. The reload also does 10 times the base damage. So you've got the radiation splash, um, you've got action skill damage, gun damage, V1, V2 debuff, all that formula going into it. And so it is just spamming it and we're just gonna be reload canceling it, um, just like punching and going crazy and it's just gonna one shot everything. And so we use the 150 over 90 anointment because if an enemy gets close to this pestilence, it's gonna one shot it unless it's a boss. So having this here is big and we don't really use the pestilence for bossing. So that downside doesn't really matter too much. And then we have the guardian angel. The guardian angel here is for when we swap to our action skill, mainly being uh, the phase cast, I like to use Tandava, but you could also use phase slam because it's still plenty powerful and would work very well. I've got respective guardian angels with different anointments here. And then here I have a face puncher. This is used for body and mind. So you want a times 14, the level and the damage doesn't matter. Ideally you'd want probably times 14 with the most max size possible. And I use it with Terra Cryo as we're using Terra on this build. So having Terra Cryo just is really nice. And then I have a low level sellout. This is for self dotting since I'm using a driver and elemental projector. This just helps boost other damage, especially since I'm mainly using corrosive here. So I can dot myself with corrosive damage if I need to, if my driver's down, um, this will just help a bunch. I use, like to have this with ammo regen just so I don't have to reload since I mainly avoid reload speed as much as possible. So just not having the reload is super helpful. And then we have our red suit and you're gonna want this with power charge to get that extra gun damage to go into that pestilence. We use the red suit purely because of the pestilence. Um, it does mean that we're not dealing as much damage with our action skill, but that's fine. We still deal plenty of damage and yeah, you just become immune to your radiation damage, which is crazy. So we have this with ASC Apply Terror. This is so we can have Terror V1 here. Amar doesn't have Terror anywhere else besides Victory Rush Kika Combo, and we don't really have Kika Combo going on this build, and I don't use Victory Rush too often on this build since I don't have any lifesteal, so I like to use Auto Idle. So having this V1 damage is huge. And so here with the fish slap here, I have um, triple link parts. I go radiation just so I can't damage myself with the fish slap. Um, this is so um, because the main thing I'm using this for is getting body and mind. I do have some stuff specced into melee, but it's not being a big damage dealer damage dealer here it's mainly just for body and mind and it'll still deal a good amount of damage as radiation it just kind of helps you not have to pay attention to the fish slap but you can easily just throw on a different element fish slap and go from there you just kind of have to pay attention 
Corrosive would be really good on here since we're already applying a corrosive dot from our driver since I mainly use um, corrosive damage, but it also just depends on the enemy's health bar that I need it for. And then we use a driver. The driver is used here because it gives up close to 500% gun damage. So um, this gun damage will be going into Pestilence. This will also be applying a dot of our element to elemental projector, which then will benefit for our action skill. So we've got it helping us for radiation with Pestilence, as well as still our action skill from Elemental Projector. Now the main thing you'll want with this is Splash Damage, Splash Radius, and three points into Mindfulness. You go three points so you can get as much movement speed for as much gun damage as possible with the Driver. Action Skill cooldown is nice, but it is just close to one Expedite um, stack, and the Pestilence Nova will give Expedite stacks, which is nuts. It will not proc Laid Bear, even though it counts as an action skill. So you do want to keep that in mind. Um, yeah, this is nuts on Umbara. So Driver is the main thing to go here with the Splash Damage, Splash Radius, and Mindfulness points. The Reload does not get Pistol Damage, as it's not a gun, and it's just how the damage formula applies. So having Pistol Damage on here would do nothing for you. And then we have the elemental projector auto idle. The main thing is having the elemental projector with area of effect damage. Um, the area of effect damage is to boost the splash damage of the pestilence, as well as body and mind and our action skills. And it gives increased radius when in the second or third slot. Magazine size is purely here for the face puncher, just so I get more shots before reloading, just personal preference. And the action skill cooldown rate is nice, but again, it's only one stack of Expedite when we mainly are good enough with um, having Expedite proc from Pestilence and our kills after Guardian Angel goes off. So I'd probably just focus on an Elemental Projector Auto Idle with element with Area of Effect damage. Auto Idle is just really nice here because we don't have um, Lifesteal from sustainment since we can't reach it so it's just a great survivability especially since we're constantly having a dot applied on us you could also go a victory rush here which is really nice you would not want to go static charge here because that static charge will make you take self damage from the fish slap all right and then i'll just go over stuff um with non-pestilence if you didn't want to use the pestilence on this build and just go action skills then you'd go this and stuff that you would change would be getting either like a revolter or a frozen heart frozen heart is really nice for having unweave the rainbow so that's why i have this back in the skill tree just for if you want to use frozen heart uh, it also just can deal some decent damage for lower level enemies a revolter will just give you a great bonus element for everything with um, having body and mind and the guardian angel. I'd probably go a phase zerker here. The top points don't really matter, but I do still like using an elemental projector. So having points in anima is nice. And then you use the sellout more because you're not using driver. And then I'd swap to something like the mesmer as well as swapping to like a face puncher with melee applied tear. So we've got the action skills action skills start going here while having terror damage and fire rate available from swapping to the face puncher you do lose the bonus element from terror cryo you can also just swap a bunch more if you want to but i found ideal enough damage this is not going to clear as fast as using the pestilence but it's really like only the pestilence why we're going red suit and driver otherwise you would not do that setup and then here we have the setup for the Unleashed Dragon. The Unleashed Dragon is a double dipping status effect based off of the impact of melee damage. So we're using something super strong with melee, the Fish Slap. Absolutely nuts. It's the melee damage formula plus splash instead of grenade damage formula. So we have this with the Unleashed Dragon. You're gonna want it with incendiary damage and melee damage. Um, just because it's so easy to roll this, you'll want to get a perfect one. 
and I'll go over in order how you're going to do this. So first, you're going to have a sellout to break a low level ward. We use the Brawler ward for the 300% increase melee damage this gives to put into the fish shot. We don't have many melee boosts here, like in our skill tree, it's all gear. So having this 300% is really good. The only reason we don't have it in our skill tree is because we need it elsewhere. So we break that, and then you also want to stack terror. You can probably do this before the sellout because it's easy to keep up the terror, but we use this for the V1 damage because this V1 damage will double dip into Unleash the Dragon that we have here. And then you're going to want to probably activate some sort of action skill to proc laid bear be phase cast or phase grasp doesn't really matter phase cast is probably easier and we want this because the laid bear debuff will double dip into the um unleash the dragon and then we have the psycho stabber you're going to hold this at first you're going to throw the fish slap it's going to apply the dot and the enemy should be over 90 percent health because this will this has to one shot him. it does so much damage unless you do something wrong this should one shot them um so you have this going with the dot 150 over 90 because the psycho stabber has 120 percent melee blade then has a 100 percent melee multiplier to it that is separate which is insane and then you're going to instantly swap to a guardian angel there's not many anointments that'll help here you could probably use a 150 over 90 if for some reason they still have super high health. So with that, with the Guardian Angel, this will boost up the 500% V2 damage into the Unleash the Dragon. And the Unleash the Dragon will be lasting even longer because we're using a Phase Zerker with points in Anima. And with this, you're going to want to have as many points in Anima as possible, plus melee damage and splash damage. That melee and splash damage will increase the base hit of the Unleash the Dragon. And then you'll have that formula go with the status effect formula, the weird status effect formula it has uh, with the uh, Berserker. Splash Radius is here, but it's not really needed because it's really just hitting one enemy and you should be aiming. So that's less important here. All right, and now we'll go over the phase flare setup. Phase flare, the baseball is insanely strong when done right. It's very easy to with gear and Amar just has good formula for it. It deals increased damage based off of how good your melee is and the action skill damage. Um, I'll have the ball formula with the damage formula document linked down below. But we have the Psycho Stabber here and the Garden Angel are gonna be big things. We have the Face Puncher to stack terror for that V1 damage as we don't have it anywhere else. We have a sellout to proc a status effect on us with Elemental Projector. And then I have a Revolter and I'm using Revolter to have another instance of melee to stack um, up ball because you can stack it up five times before it breaks. So with how I have it here with one bonus element, I'll have Psycho Stabber, uh, base punching plus revolter to be two stacks so i'll punch it twice in this build not counting when you spawn it parts don't really matter here you just need action skill start and any grenade with terror damage and fire rate will work here and then i like to use a stone here because you get points in awakening and do farm it's Awakening just helps with action skill damage as well. Just anything with rush stacks is really nice. So we have that going. Um, you can also just go fives and do harm, but basically anything helps. Um, but really just awakening and do harm points, and then focusing with splash damage and melee damage and splash damage radius can also help with hitting the enemy if the enemy moves. But mainly I'd probably focus on the splash damage and melee damage because you can always call the ball over to the enemy. And then we use an elemental projector, 129% melee damage is just really good. You want this with area of effect damage for the splash damage as well as melee damage boost. More elemental damage 
can't hurt, but it's not going to be as good as getting melee damage. Now, you can get the board here, and it kind of just depends on the arena. You can also get a static charge for a different um, instance of melee as well. But places like the um, Trial of Fervor, where you're really testing out damage, that is going to be tough because um, the arena sucks. But yeah, so let me just swap to here and I'll basically just show what I do. Basically shoot here, I'll go here, by dot, I will spawn ball, come back, I will punch it, pull it back, and then aim it at the enemy and it'll go after them. And then it'll deal all the damage and you're good. You can even just call it if the enemy moves back to the enemy if you need to. You can also use a phase zerker. Um, it's not bad here, but I'd probably rather use stone because it's also just good at gaining rush stacks because Amara can self dot to gain rush stacks easily. And then just to mention some other gear here, I do have stingers as well. You can use this really well on action skill builds or melee builds. You can kind of just equip that, do this, and you could use any action skill you want. You could still go phase cast with this and go ham. Um, it's just not something I really mess with much, but you definitely can, or just base phase grasp. Since I'm not able to reach eternal fist, sadly, I'd love to, but there's other stuff I'd rather get and would just be better for the build. As well as utility grenades, the Quasar and Mesmer are really good, especially when I'm just going action skill focused um, instead of going Pestilence. This is just really nice. You could even still use this with Pestilence build, but having another source of damage like the Fish Slap is just a lot better. All right, and now we'll go over the skill tree. So we have Do Harm here because it's action skill damage, dealing tons of stuff with action skill damage, the Pestilence, Body and Mind, um, just our action skill in general. So you need this at five out of five. We have fast hands here for reload speed, swap speed, and boat swap speed. Mainly the weapon swap speed and boat swap speed as having reload speed generally isn't good for Amara here with the Pestilence, but the other stuff outweighs having reload speed. Then I just go max violent tapestry for better applying status effect chance just for more rush stacks and higher chance to maybe apply a rad dot to something before it dies to get a good red explosion going then i you see i go transcend here we're not really using anything that crits but the accuracy is nice for shooting the face puncher so i go that there restless is useless it's less than a stack of expedite you don't need it you don't want reload speed so you don't take this so this is the next best thing i go and send it to boost expedite more laid bare to apply a amazing debuff and then i go fr one point in from rest just for some fire rate and charge speed i could go wrath to really min max but this when i have like driver with like 500 percent gun damage isn't gonna be that big of a difference you, these points transcend and from rest are the main flexible points but you don't really put them anywhere else Awakening is huge here. Um, it's cracked. And then we have a remnant. Remnant is going to be a big thing here. Uh, we use this for one-shotting bosses when we get close to an enemy. So you'll get an, make sure an enemy is close to them and then just use the guardian angel plus your action skill. It will spawn a remnant orb and one-shot the boss. You can just do it on the normal set up the first setup i showed it works just fine you can really min max it but it's very overkill just want to make sure you have that elemental projector going because the remnant double dips um your formula it takes the base hit of what it spawned from your gunner action skill action skill being easier and then it goes through the action skill formula so all the global damage boost we're getting is huge uh so it's just cracked. The only problem is Remnant can have weird eye and pathing and enemies don't always spawn close enough to Remnant. So it is slower compared to like other Vault Hunters who can just flat out kill it. 
or Umbara going like Unleash a Dragon and potentially Ball. It's still cracked though, um, and still really strong. It just needs that second enemy. And then we have Awakening to boost our rush, um, what our rush stacks do, um, which is just <laughs> insane. And then we have Avatar, big reason why we're going down here. So we can activate our action skill twice. I have thought about not messing with not taking this, but the second I'm not using Pestilence, I'll want Avatar. Um, the reason I wouldn't need it is because Pestilence can get so many Expedite stacks, I may not need to get Avatar for that second action skill. But it also just boosts Rush stacks even more, which is really nice. And I like Tendaba, so we're going down here anyways. Same with Remnant, so may as well take it. In Red Tree, we're mainly unlocking Fire as well as we need one point in Infusion. And when going down that, we take points in Anima. Four points here. I have five from my class mod. Um, getting this is just really important for extending our dots and making dots more powerful when we're doing dot stuff. In Green Tree, we want to get Find Your Center because it makes meleeing with the Pestilence actually a lot better. So it's a big reason getting down here as well as Mindfulness. I actually take one less point here so I can get um, Soul Fire while still getting everything else. But we have Driver going that makes it five out of three. So it's still good enough with the movement speed while still getting Find Your Center. But to get down here, we take Clarity for some nice um, health regen as well as Samsara being nice health regen since we don't have Life Steal. I have one point in Helping Hands just because I like the arms being out. Um, but you'd want to go two points for the splash damage going on. Even though it's not much, it's just 8% at 2 out of 5. It's still there. And then Purple Tree, we're going for Clear the Mind because Clear the Mind is huge here. This will remove the elemental resistances. Um, so Radiation will just be weaker versus Armor. But because we have Clear the Mind, Pestilence just doesn't care if you're going against armor. It doesn't have that downside, which makes the Pestilence even more dumb on a mark. So with Purple Tree to get down here, we go Heavy Rain for the splash damage. Trusting yourself to get swap speed mainly because uh, we're swapping a lot. We have Go with the Flow and Unweave the Rainbow just for if we're using certain cryo stuff. We mainly don't go cryo action skills because that turns off anima. And so since we're using infusion, if we dot ourselves, we're going to slow ourselves, which is really annoying. Then I go burn both ends for increased um, elemental damage, which is insane, as well as just boosting non-elemental damage, which is weird with this um, skill. Body and mind is huge. It has the base damage, so it doesn't matter what you're dealing, but also means it's not double dipping. It's just great source of action skill damage. With it going in fusion plus the face puncher, you deal 48 um, body and mind. No, did I say 48? 28 body and mind Novas, which is crazy, especially with the formula. It's just insane with single target. You could go Blade Fury, but we don't have Indiscriminate, and that's where the power is. So you want to go Face Hunter over Blade Fury. Free the Soul, again, if we're using Cryo enemies um, and we're using Frozen stuff, then Free the Soul is really nice. It works like a different remnant. And then we're at Clear the Mind, which I already went over. Um, it also just helps with if we're not element matching, like using Corrosive versus Shields makes it not help, makes it a lot better, but it doesn't remove elemental um immunity so you do still have to keep that in mind and then the main action skill i like to use is tandava but I, reverb is also really good here for single target you can also use base slam is really good um, based on things you can use phase grass ball i would not use unless you're just doing a single target because it's just so wonky and then you'll be focusing on that instead of pestilence reloads and then we have nothing funky going on with Guardian rank and Mayhem mode um, is just regular. I hope you guys enjoyed the build video. This build does take some knowledge to play correctly and I try and explain the best I can, but I will link tons of videos in the description to help you guys out. And please ask any questions you have in the comments or in my Discord. 
Amara is super fun, and whenever I play Amara, I just want to use her action skills in some way. And Amara just happens to be best when using action skill damage in some way, or melee. Now, I took a lot of stuff and information from different people, so shout out to Quag, Lazy Data, and Stone Swan, and just other people in general throughout BL3 for finding all the knowledge, making builds, and allowing me to combine this stuff to make such an insane build because this would not happen without them again you can find the save file in my discord which is linked down below as well as my other socials if you haven't i would appreciate it if you like and subscribe and i will see you guys next time peace